Um, yeah, the Theo the wood turn. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of the record power tool things, and and uh, he had showed these. I got I got a thing on my screen. Hold on. So Theo had showed this gizmo, and I actually have one right that he had gotten somebody to make for him, and and oh, let's grab a cube. And so I went and I made a, a number of things, but this is basically a driving mechanism. This fits in the chuck, but I'm, I'm not gonna use any of that stuff. Um, another thing is I made these cone centers and you could actually make this from wood, which would be a better, better way to do this than the way I'm gonna do it from, holding a standpoint, okay? Uh, these are threaded to fit uh, a robust drive, friction drive center and a tailstock live center, uh, three quarter 10. Um, if you don't have a three quarter 10 tap, I highly recommend go to Tractor Supply, pick one up. I thread a lot of stuff. Um, to use, you know, again, I'm always thinking of what can I do to make it easier for me and, and you know, um, your imagination's the limit, but I'm just gonna use the, the, uh, the hole in the headstock and then uh, tailstock with a, with the centerpiece punched out. So it's a cone. Okay. Just a quick question. Is it hard to tap, tap wood? You have to pick Oh no no, are... no no! You can look up what the tap drill size, drill it, tap it. I'll give you an example of stuff that I. I have a a spindle tap as well. So here's something that uh, I can use to push against a finished piece and not mar it. If I for some reason I have to go back in. Um, I use this when I do spheres and stuff. And you know, um, here's here's a a friction drive, but it's relative to the spindle. Put it on, make it round, and and you can use this for removing bottoms, or whatever, as a as a friction friction drive thing. Um, let's see here. Okay, so when I I have a Nova chuck, a Nova two chuck with uh, I think they're thirty five millimeter jaws, and I've been using those a lot, a lot, a lot. And in the my process of doing this, I do I probably do a lot more steps than most people would just because I work at it and I, I nibble away at stuff. Okay, so this is a piece of cherry. It's good and dry. Um, even if it weren't, I wouldn't be too worried about uh, the movement that's gonna happen because it's, you're, you're not dealing with a, a normal looking thing. So, you know. Um, this is bandsaw cut on the outside, uh, but it is it is a cube, and I'm not worried about the finish on the side because I'll I'll, I'll take care of that at the very end. Okay, so hey Marcel, yeah, I'm here. Look here, this is where the cameras are. You can you can play camera guy right there. <laughs> okay, and just don't break the camera. Well, that I, with that face, wish. that's looking at the tail <laughs> from the tail stock. Boy, Marcel's looking older. Straight on. I'm not sure which. I think going on top. That's this one. It is probably the best one. But uh, let me just. Okay, so the HD is, is this one. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Um, the top, one, the is top the, one is the tail stock, tail stock and the USB number, the first USB one is looking at it this way. Okay. 
Now, I normally have all kinds of lights on, but I can't put the lights on because it creates too much glare. Even these fluorescents almost cause too much glare. So, <clears throat> and if you want me to move that camera, we can move it, but I, I think it'll be okay. Yeah, let's see what ends up. Okay. Isn't cameraman above your pay grade, Marcel? <laughs> well, wait until you see the bill for this. <laughs> you think there's been no action in the uh, checking account of yet? <laughs> I'm, I'm popping out a live center that I have in there. Um, can you see this one? No. Oh. Never more towards the headstock. There you go. Oh, that's it. Okay, so. I just picked this up and I like it because it's it's actually a CNC live center. But I like it because it has a small diameter. I don't use, I don't normally use a point center. But when I do, um, I like this a lot. I usually use a cup center, you know, with the with the center point and then the cup to hold it in. Can you see the tailstock? I or do I have to move I, the camera? No, I uh well it's it shows the hand wheel a whole lot better than the piece of wood. The camera would have to come, not that one. I'm on the oh you're on the tailstock, yeah. Okay. So if that's yeah, that's as good as we'll get. Okay. Now is that is that too much light? Nope, that's fine. Oh, that's, that's too much. That's that one much. is. Yeah, that just blew it out. Okay. Hang on. Where did the cameras go? <laughs> Rot roll. <laughs> okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to establish a tenon. I'm going I'm to bring it down some. Uh, can we? Are we looking at the cube here? Yeah, come here. Come what? here. <laughs> I can't. Where's the icon for? Where'd it go? Right there, that little right there. Well, well next to the camera. Oh, right that there. Freaking little arrow. Okay, gotcha. Okay, All so right, that one's this. the overhead. Yeah, that's what okay. You want, right? And and now that light's too much. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Yep, that's better. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I'm mean, working in the dark. Okay, now I'm, I'm looking at this piece. I hadn't really looked at it before, but I have a. I will have a little bit of check there. Ah, here we go. Yeah, that's how it was home. Just back. Now, what's so, what's the bowl and what's the foot at that orientation? And when, it could be either. It could be the war. Okay. Okay, the thing is that uh, in my process of doing this, I'm going to rough out a little bit, establish a tenon, cut off extra, stick it in the chuck. I'll still be using the live center on the other end. Do a tenon. Because it's held in the chuck, I'll cut it off and then I'll use a live center to come over and put a, a center point in. Hey, hey, Ron, I got a question for you. I, I may have missed it, but what what is in the headstock? What, what is that point of the bolt of the uh, cube sticking into? Just the Morse taper. The Morse, Morse taper. The Morse taper hole. Just the hole in the headstock. Okay. That's that's the drive thing. Now. Okay, I missed that. Okay. You guys that have cut off. Um. A 45 degree thing for the tailstock end, so they could use a cup center with the with the center point. Um, I'm fortunate enough that I have a live center that the center can come out. And I'm using that that cup, the inverted cone to hold it. Okay. 
I'm not used to working in this little amount of light. <laughs> okay, uh, I might be muffled a bit because I want to put my my face shield on because where I can't see as well as I'd like to, I'm I'm a little. I don't want to be eating this damn thing. Okay. Now, my lathe weighs 700 and some odd pounds and there's 600 pounds of ballast on here. So I, a lot of times I turn a lot faster than most people would. And I'm just whacking away stock right now. That's weird. You know. Okay, one thing I will tell you is that, let me, let me, oh, marker here. When you work, you want to stay below the, the, the corners, okay? You want the inside of the bowl to be before the corner. So you want your wall thickness to go to the corner. Okay. You don't want to go past that. Does that make sense? So I'm, I'm going to rough it out and I'm just double checking. You probably had some light with this view. What? You probably had some light with this view. Is the overhead view is, is well, no, maybe not. You hang on. You want the overhead? No, no, I was just saying you might try to like with the different view. Man. It may not it may not uh, reflect as much. So this is this is gonna be the bowl end. When everything's all said and done, this is gonna be the bowl end. Basically a safety center. If you gotta catch them, just stop spinning. Is that, is that too much noise? Can you nope. not hear that all right? Can you still hear? Yep. Yeah. Start the yeah zoom, on because I'm fogging up. Zoom cancels um, those low, low noises like that. Oh, okay. Even with this. All right. Yep. I'm going to use a 50 millimeter chuck. So I'm just setting up some calipers. Um.
So these calipers are set to 50 millimeter jaws, basically two inches. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna set a tenon. To do the tenon, I have a, a skew that sharpened that sharpened at the angle that my jaws are set up. If your lathe doesn't stop as quick as mine does, because I have a break. <laughs> you have double tilt jaws? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm small. Camera. Uh, you hit the camera with your hand. Oh. You're just gonna go <laughs> more towards the headstock. Your headstock, yeah. Down into the headstock. There we go. That's pretty good. Uh, just a little more to the headstock. Yeah, good. I hit it with my your helmet, your mask. Yeah, okay. Your, so your thing. I, I missed that, so I'm gonna do another one. That should be fine. So when I do tenons, very seldom I, on most stuff, very seldom I do much more than three sixteenths of an inch of holding. I, I feel odd that I'm actually measuring because I usually, I have stuff that I use to cheat. <laughs> I don't have to measure what I'm normally trying. So now I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna nibble away at that. The tenon is right there. Yeah. And okay, so the stuff prior to that can go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I've got a ways to go here, but I, I want to go back and forth okay so i'm just gonna whack away here and and cut it off and Okay, I'm not going to go much further because I'm getting nervous. Now, Ron does stuff a little differently than most people. Big surprise there. Everybody tells you to get a, an adapter for your chuck to meet your lathe. Well, I have four apparatuses, three lathes and a finishing thing that I made. So I put the adapters on the lathes and my and my gizmo thing, and all my chucks just fit on every on every lathe, every everything. 
Okay, so just thought I'd mention that. Okay, now before I go and tighten now, I'm going to bring the tailstock up and let it hold it to, just to make sure it's centered. Okay, and on this, uh, for this bowl, I think I'm going to make it uh, deep. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a We'll go with the um, 50 millimeter tenon where I can get to that. Okay. Once I can make the tenon, then I'll, I'll um, plan that for how deep I'm going to go in, in uh, doing the bowl. Okay. So, so we're tight. So on my on my guards, I'm using a kind of like a store batty uh, grind. It's for me, it's a 45-40, but sharp in the same way. Only thing my my angle behind the gouge is uh, towards the bottom is is 45 degrees. <laughs> So I, I wing it a lot of times. I'm really winging it tonight. <laughs> into solid material. I don't know if you can see the tool bouncing, but it needs to be sharpened. Where you go over that? I can't. So with tenons, I think I never used to be real fussy about my tenons. But the fussy you are with your tenon being close to the actual size that your your chuck holds is actually the ideal the piece of run truer. You have your best holding capacity. If the tenon's too big, 
you're actually hitting in eight spots rather than rather than the uh, yeah I like it I like it I like it okay so now I want to think about are we on top or are we from the end you're on top okay so go to the to the corner here and what I think I'm gonna do is I've got my tenon. And I think the bot the, the diamond that just passed is gonna be the foot of the bowl. Okay, and we're gonna make a deep bowl out of this. One thing that's for sure is making a bowl out of the cube is not the most efficient way to make a bowl. <laughs> okay, you, you definitely go through a bit of stock. Okay, so I'm gonna to look to go from, I'm gonna shake the outside now. And then hopefully I can uh, mimic the inside. So I'm, I'm going to be wasting a lot of stock. Yeah. So basically, you're going to be turning away the corners closest to I'm not, the stock. I'm not making the three footed thing. I'm not making legs. Right. I'm just making a, a cone, three sided cone type of a right. bowl. Right. But, but the, the corners, the cube corners closest to the Tell stock are going to get turned away. Is that true? All of this right here yep. is yep. going to get turned away till just basically to the to the uh, point. But I'm going to stay just shy because my checks don't necessarily always run dead bad, and I always finish both inside and out at the at the end. When I do regular bowls, I do it differently than most. I, on the second turning, I'll semi rough in the outside of the bowl, and then I concentrate on the inside of the bowl. And then while that's set up, then I finish the outside. I, I like, I work different, you know, just mm -hmm. Ron's, Ron's approach to life. I'm special. So you're not <laughs> leaving three of those points as feet? I, I, what do you want that kind of a bowl on this one? That's what I would do. <laughs> is, is that what you want? Then I'll I'll do that. Um, I was just gonna make a different type. You want with you want it with the three feet? I just assume dip, see different. Well, do you do you want the? Oh wait, do you want it what? with the three feet? Oh no, well, that's that's not what I was thinking. I was thinking like the. The three feet that the fork that the corners produced when you have it at forty five degrees, yeah, uh, yeah kind of like that, yeah, kind of like that. I can do that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep but it. Do, do it. Uh, I don't want to mess you up. Do do it the way you were gonna do it. I'm, I'm just stepping around here. I'm, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll turn this. That's let's take a consensus. Uh, yeah, what everybody else wants. I'm not doing much sanding though. Yeah, I'd say just to, just to the basic bowl for right now. Okay, I'm, I'm, if, if you're not doing standing, I'm signing off. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> um, okay, on, on that bowl, let me see that one. On this bowl, the bottom is actually too big. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually. Go so just a little bit bigger than this here, four points, and then I'll shape relative to that. The thing is that getting into the V here is is uh, is a little trick. Okay, give me a minute. I gotta do a little touch up. So 
with both stuff I sharpen by hand. I don't, on my spindle gouges, I use a jig. But for my full gouges, I, uh, I sharpen by hand. The 40-40 basic type of grind. Okay, I got some flats here from what I've done. I'm going to go just past that. Just a little bit more. Now I'm actually getting bigger than I wanted to be, but that was because I put the flat across the bottom. Um, I'm, my goal right now is to get rid of the flat. Just a smidgen of one. There we go. I gotta blast some material away. Put the face shield on, Roy. Overhead. You are. Overhead. Oh, it is on the overhead. Yeah. Okay. So, you, so can you see the, the shadow of what's there? Yep. Okay. That's that's basically what I'm I'm watching at. I'm looking at. Let me rearrange my uh for us a little bit. So what what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to get a a uniform wall on the bottom, and then we'll uh. How tall we can make this this bowl. Actually, I'm going to take some off of the, uh, the top as well.
Okay. Ooh, I'm almost up to the corner here. I'll tell you, I really wish I could put my lights on. I'll be able to see anything. Oh. I chipped off a piece. Uh, I'll just have to sand a little bit more on that face. Nobody will know the difference. Let me try a different view. <clears throat> that better? Yeah. You want to see that way for a while? My shield is really dirty. I'm going to do those pickle dots now to get into the corner. Good enough for now. Now I'm going to blast away a bunch of material to able to reverse this and chuck it. And what I'm gonna end up doing is when I reverse it, I wanna get a center point into the, into the center on both ends in, in the end, okay? I, I wanna make sure there's a center point there, okay? There's my tennis. I turn it up to the tennis. It's been a while since I've thrown anything.
That was a catch. That was a spinner card you took, right? That was just, yeah. They can be racing as hell. Huh? They can chase after grain. So now this is the inside of the bowl. This is going to be the inside of the bowl. What what I want to do is I want to try to get a, a semi flat there so I can line up my thing because I I'd be surprised if this runs true. Yeah. So I'm just gonna make a little flat there and then I'll uh, use what's there as a witness to line it up. Okay, so the little cone that's yeah. So this is a one-way line center, and I'm going to use it to line up to the material that's there to get it to run semi-true. See how that works. I can move with that. I can move with that. So everybody understand what I just did? Yep. <laughs> I said I was very good, Turner. <laughs> I did it done. Ron, were you readjusting that center point because the cube was not perfectly cube? No, because when I put it in the, in the chart, it was running out. So I was trying to get it to run fairly true. Well, what was running out? Because you. The whole thing was wobbly. It was wobbly. Okay. So. Can they, can they see this right here? They can see okay. it. Yep. That round thing, I tried to line it up fairly close to a cup center. Oh, uh, okay. That's it's it. off a little bit, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn everything finished now. So it shouldn't be an issue. And this is going to be a, oh, actually a fairly deep hole, kind of. And I use the tailstock all the time. 
I'm not worried about the, I normally wouldn't use this sound for that, but I want to be able to get in there a bit. And I'm going to waste off a lot of stock before I get close to taking the mail down. Let me just Where a lot of the jaws that I make, they might not as they run true. I don't get too worked up about it. See how it wobbles? But that's all right. So I might take a kick back before I finish this. I might take a kick back on that other surface. Remember, you want the inside of the bowl to be on this side of the corner. Okay, so this face right here, you know, just, I did, I, when I went to do one once, I went past it and I got all messed up. I'm just blasting stock away. I'm not, I'm not concerned about finish or anything at this point. I want to get ready to remove the tail, the, the tail stock. So I can get out of the easier. Yeah. I'll tell you, whenever I'm on a different wave, I can still always grab them for break. <laughs> <laughs>
I just grabbed this Tyndall guy. <laughs> Of push cuts. Uh, very sound guy. I'm going to a bottom feeder guys now. You probably can't see my body. I'm not going to the dance. Okay, so it's a little uneven, but I'll straighten that out when I cut the outside of it. Let me take it down a little bit more. Okay, so here's the thinnest corner. I'm going to leave it at that.
I think I've done it once or twice before. Yeah, so if, if your hand came over the edge of the tool rest, it would hurt a lot. <laughs> Took the camera just a bit. This down. one? Yeah. Go back the other way. Looking good. A little bit more. Okay. Let me do a quick touch up on this bottom feeder. I like it. I like it. I like it. It's not bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. So normally I would use. Oh, I don't think I have one that'll fit. <laughs> Ron's happy. <laughs> so I do this with the majority of my bowls where I do the inside and then I have a support piece. That comes in. Now, what's going to happen is that's going to keep it from vibrating. I should be able to get a good finish on the outside. Yeah, flex. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, see if I get lucky. Let me touch up this tool. Even though I can't <laughs> see, <laughs> uh, I really should have uh, painted the shield.
what you do here is make it concentric. That's really what I'm trying to do. I'll tell you, without the lights, I'm having a high time. I have to turn this on. All right, sorry guys. I, I have to turn that on so I can see. Hey, how about that? Sorry, I'll, once I get past the corner, I'll turn it back off. I just don't want to eat this thing. Yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. It's a crack in this. Okay, so this this part here blending them together on the one I did where they came together at a point, it was a little sketchy. <laughs> Just a little. <sighs> Ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, Marcel, that actually doesn't look too bad with that. I was going to say, even as color. Hey, okay, so here we go. So check forms. Are you there? Yep. Hey, can you see the tool I'm using? Yep. Nice looking tool. You have one. Yes, I do. Ah, this is a negative rig scraper. Yep. I have to admit that I rely a lot on negative rig scrapers. I think that looks pretty good. I, I can't see it. We don't have a see if I can find that camera. Nope. No, the other one. Hang on. Um where were we? Yeah. No. Son of a 
That's a good view. Yeah, perfect. So instead of coming to a coming to a point into a sharp Ooh, angle. I had some of the flat here. I'll just sand it out. I'm not gonna go back there. Okay, so I'll tell you what. I'm gonna try to make it even to what's on the bottom from here. And show them they can see it now. See the um there's a knot yeah. and there's a, a crack that's, crack that's right opened there. up on that knot. Yeah. Spin it, spin it toward the for the camera in front of you, you know, yeah. right there. Yeah. Hmm. If I were really smart, I'd probably see a glue it. Yeah, see a glue. I'm not that smart. <laughs> well, you're done with that part of the. Almost. I'm, I'm gonna make. I make this semi parallel before I spin it around to. Uh... Well, I really like the uh, little fillet there. My knuckle was almost rubbing on the uh, back side of the bowl thing. <laughs> That's why I always wear fingerless gloves when I'm turning. Actually, you know what? So, uh, I'm not going to get into doing any sanding. I'm just taking a friction drive.
I'm talking. I'm talking to the camera. There we go. Yep, just a little, little bit more. I kind of messed it up. I'm not gonna worry about cutting it out. End up sanding it so it's easy. Uh, if I try to correct this now and slow them enough, end up with all kinds of shadow. Ah. Like that. What's the worst thing that happens but blow it up? Just one more cut. Yeah, yep. just one more cut. That's the one. Yeah, I have some tear out right there. So. <laughs> You know, there's a saying, better lucky than good. And I'm pretty lucky there. So I didn't get into any sanding and stuff. In reality, a lot of the sanding I do is usually off of the lathe. And with those wings, you have to sand most of it off the lathe anyhow. I'm surprised Ron hasn't invented and designed a reciprocating sanded. <laughs> so it'll go in and out three times per rev. <laughs> Well, I'm not going you know, smaller than that. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I'll take some um, wire dikes and snip that. I'm going to do that right now. And you know, while he was while he was doing that, I'm going to show you something. I, I I've been playing with the, uh, the things that we have. Check this out. Huh. Oh. <laughs> from the same piece of wood. No, no, yeah, but I'm looking at the shape of it. It's almost exactly huh. half gold. Oh, oh, oh. It's <laughs> kind of weird. <laughs> you know, you could make, that, that unlucky thing good. You could make four of them and <laughs> yeah, you got the same curve and everything. Muscle memory. So That's exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's but what his eye sees. We're gonna go back to uh, yeah, yeah. That one. Okay, so oh very nice. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Um yeah, hold on, hold on one second. <laughs> Check, uh, man, the lighting. Oh, it's the, uh, where is it? Doesn't show up right here. A little bit of a divot, a little bit of a chip there. That's what he was talking about. That Underneath? Better, better yeah. lucky than, yeah. you know, and a little bit of a catch. <laughs> but damn close. <laughs> <That's good>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I have a big compressor, so I can use an air die grinder for it's still uh, like a car shop. <laughs> <laughs> so with is with is a chip. Right there, I'll just sand the outer edge to get rid of it. Okay, but hey, there's a bowl from a cube. <laughs> Very nice, Ron. Very good. Thank you. Ron. Very nice. Nice job. Yeah. Beautifully.